بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين We thanks and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We uh, remember all the blessing he has bestowed upon us and we send salutation upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his companion, his household, and all his righteous followers until the day of judgment. May Allah make us among them. Uh, today's reminder will be about uh, the month of Shawwal, or uh, some reminders that we should follow up the good things we have learned from the month of Ramadan throughout the year inshallah ta'ala as we all know uh, the month of ramadan is a seasonal uh, worship it's once a year that comes regularly and uh, we learn through the month of ramadan uh, a lot of things in terms of attaining taqwa meaning uh, attaining consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything we do and uh, in everything we say. So once we learn those skills, we need to apply them throughout our lives. Because worshiping Allah overall is not seasonal. It's not only in Ramadan. It's also outside the month of Ramadan. That's why uh, in Islam, we are very blessed. Every aspect of our faith is linked to a practical aspect of our life. When you look at uh, the punctualities in the prayer, Allah SWT mentioned in the Quran, Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minin kitaban ma'guta. Certainly, we have enjoined the prayer upon the believers at a specific or appointed time. You don't just uh, start praying at least the fard prayer, the obligatory prayers, as you wish. When we say prayer, we mean the ritual prayer. It's not the supplication, it's not the zikr or others. These prayers, they have specific time. And when you are following that, you're organizing your calendar, you're organizing your life revolving around the prayer. So it makes you be, in general, that is the ultimate goal, basically, for you to be punctual. And uh, likewise, when we are uh, in Ramadan, we learn a lot of skills. Among them is to learn self-control and self-discipline. When you abstain from eating, drinking, and other uh, prohibition during the month of Ramadan, basic prohibition, I mean, basic things that we need in our lives, like drinking when you are thirsty, but yet you control yourself at that particular moment. You wait until a right time. It means that you are mastering a skill of self-control and self-discipline. When you are able to do that during the month of Ramadan, you may as well do it outside Ramadan. And this exercise need to continue for lifetime, not only for Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered or instructed our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to worship his Lord until certainty comes to him. Worship your Lord until you meet death. And this instruction applies to all the believers. And uh, when we strive, we try our best to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his commands, we abstain from the major sins he has prohibited from us, inshallah ta'ala, 
he will forgive us our uh, minor sins as well as the major sins by his rahmah this is uh, in the Quran in Surah Nisa Surah Nisa is uh, Surah number 4 of the Quran ayah number 31 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said if you avoid the great sins which you are forbidden to do we shall expiate from you your small sins and admit you to a noble entrance noble entrance here stand for Jannah may Allah make us people of Jannah so as I was saying uh, in Ramadan we learn to master uh, our actions our uh, saying we control our tongues we control our uh, limbs basically so the whole purpose of it is to make it lasting with lasting effect if somebody uh, is trying for example this is very common in our time people trying to gain I mean to lose weight not to gain to lose weight you see a lot of people concerned about their weight oh I'm overweight I need to lose some pounds here I need to lose this this so if you strive hard you lose certain proportion of uh, your weight yet after uh, only a week or a few days you pick up again so it's not having any effect no any benefit basically the only impact it will have if it's only when it's going to the long term likewise the skills and the good things we have learned in Ramadan will only benefit us if we carry it throughout our lives because what count in Islam is the end subhanallah our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to make a supplication that is very well known he said Allahumma inni as'aluka husnul khatima O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me good ending because the action that you do last in your life count much more because people uh, will people of Jannah they will do bad things they will do bad actions according to the hadith very well uh, known hadith that between them and the hellfire they will do bad things until between them and the hellfire there is only a very small distance but in the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause them to do good deeds and righteous action that will ultimately lead them to Jannah and uh, on the opposite side you will find the people destined to the hellfire they will do uh, good things some of them in their lives but in the end they will do an action that will be displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until they will end up in the hellfire may Allah protect us so consistency is the key here you have to be consistent and persistently doing the good things until you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until we meet our Lord that's why every aspect of our worship has certain sunnah the fard prayer has the 12 rakat sunnah that are well known but beside them you can perform other sunnahs like praying tahajjud at night like giving uh, the zakat this is an obligation but giving in charity is the sunnah so fasting the month of Ramadan is an obligation upon every believer upon every Muslim but then fasting six days in Shawwal become the sunnah of Ramadan subhanallah it is reported by uh, one of the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the name of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari uh, anhu he said the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever fasts during the month of Ramadan and then follows it with six days of shawwal will be rewarded as if he has fasted the entire year man sama Ramadan summa atbaw sitan min shawwalin kana qasiyam al-dahr hadith is reported by Imam Muslim and others 
So, what is the uh, key point? What is the importance of this sunnah? Is that when you pray, for example, Zuhur, before Zuhur you pray two or four rakat, and then after Zuhur you pray two or four rakat, as is uh, narrated in the sunnah, if your prayer, the obligatory prayer of Zuhur, has any defect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order the angel uh, to take from your sunnah to complement your, your fard prayer. So that when you stand in front of Allah on the day of judgment, you will have your prayer complete. And we all know the famous hadith of the Prophet wasallam when he said the first things, the believers will be accounting for on the day of judgment is their prayer, their salat. If this prayer is uh, complete, is fine, then inshallah all of their affairs will be good as well. So meaning that even if you have other things that you failed in your life, by Allah's rahmah, he will forgive you because you have completed your prayers. So it is very important to make sure we complete our fard, our obligation, so that the sunnah will be used to complement this in order to achieve the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Coming back to the hadith of uh, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, uh, he said, Fasting these six days means like the person is fasting the entire life or the entire year. Entire life in one of the narration. Why? Because if you are doing it every year, it means you are fasting. Uh, Ramadan count for 10 months. Based on the ayat of the Quran, every action of the believer is rewarded 10 times. So fasting an entire month of Ramadan is equivalent to fasting one Ramadan times ten. So you have ten months of reward. And then fasting the six days of Shawwal is counting to fasting for two months. When you add ten to twelve, I mean uh, ten to two, it makes it twelve. It means that the person has fasted twelve months. And if you keep doing that for your uh, lifetime, it means you have fasted your entire life. It is reported uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made for each hasana ten like it. Uh, this is uh, reported by Imam al-Nasai Nasai, uh, that fasting one month is like fasting ten months and fasting uh, six days is equivalent to completing a year. And uh, Imam Ibn Khuzaymah commented and said, Fasting 10 months for the month of Ramadan brings the reward of 10 months like it, and fasting the six days of Shawwal brings the reward of two months. So make it a whole year fasting. So it is very important that we don't miss on these six days of fasting after completing. Uh, the month of uh, Ramadan. Pay attention to the wording of the Hadith. He said, whoever fast Ramadan, meaning that you completed the month of Ramadan, then follows it with six days of Shawwal. It's important that you pay back whatever you have missed during the month of Ramadan for whatever the reason, for traveling, for sickness, or for uh, other reason, uh, childbirth, or whatever. You make up what you have missed during the month of Ramadan, then fast six days, inshallah ta'ala, will complete it for uh, fasting the whole year. So when do we fast in Shawwal? It is best to start fasting uh, immediately while you still have that uh, while you have the uh, what is called the habit of fasting you are already in the mood you are 
uh, in that uh, position. You're already fasted and your body has turned into that. Uh, it's tuned to fasting, basically. It's easy to fast. Before you get used to eating again, your habitual uh, ritual, as it is in the case for many people, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and uh, if you, they miss one of the meal, it's like uh, the sky is going to fall down. Oh, I didn't eat my lunch. I didn't eat my lunch. Everybody will hear that. So it's best to fast immediately after eat. And uh, this is best. Why? Because when you are doing the good things, you need to rush for it. This is what we are recommended in Islam. Run or rush for the good things that you are doing. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning uh, the call to the prayer in Surah Juma. He said, Ya ayu allazina amanu iza nudiya li salat min yawmil jum'at fas'aw ila dhikrillahi wa zarul bayah. He said, O oh, you who believe, when the call to the prayer is made on Friday, rush. Go to it very fast and consciously. But when you finish the prayer, فَإِذَا قُدِيَةِ salat." When you finish the prayer, disperse. It didn't order you to run or to rush. He said you can disperse. You can go on your way, seeking the provision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, here the call is you rush, you run for the things that you're going to do for worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the hereafter. As for the matters of the dunya, you take your time. You deliberate. So, best to uh, fast immediately after Ramadan, the six days of shawwal. However, it is not an obligation. It is permissible for somebody to take their time and then make up, I mean, uh, fast the days throughout the month of shawwal. Uh, that is the... Uh, Common understanding that you fast these six days within the month of Shawwal. You don't wait until after the month of Shawwal, you complete it. However, uh, the correct understanding when will be uh, is to feel the purpose for fasting the whole year. You may take your time even after the month of Shawwal. So, we are not encouraging anybody to delay beyond the month of Shawwal. Because the wording in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ mentioned specifically shawal. But you don't take it literally. It is permissible for somebody to go beyond the month of shawal with the intention that you are fasting to complete six days after Ramadan. anha reported that if I had some part of the fast of Ramadan to make up, I will not be able to atone for it except in Shaban, meaning the next Shaban, just before the following Ramadan. This is an indication based on the scholarly opinion that it is permissible to delay the uh, fasting of uh, Shawwal. However, it is not encouraged. Uh, the case of uh, Umbul Mumunun, uh, Umu Aisha radiallahu anha is not a general. It cannot be generalized to, the all, to all the believers. It's a specific case. So it is best to fast it uh, immediately as much, uh, I mean, as soon as you can. Caution we will have uh, very often is do we make up the missed days in Ramadan before we fast the six days of Shawwal? Yes, this is the correct understanding based on the wording of the Hadith. Because he said, whoever fasts Ramadan, meaning that you have already completed Ramadan, then follows it with the six days of Shawwal. Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymin, rahimahullah, said, if a woman, for example, the ladies, still owe days from Ramadan, then she should not fast the six days of Shawwal until after she had made up what she owes. This is his opinion is quoted the hadith saying that whoever fasts the month of Ramadan then follows it with six days of shawal, it is as, as he has fasted a whole year. 
and the Sheikh quoted uh, that hadith mentioning, I mean highlighting the point that you need to complete your uh, days of Ramadan that you have missed. However, uh, it is permissible to fast uh, Shawwal as to gain the reward and then make up the missed days of Ramadan. This is a minor opinion among the scholars. Meaning that you fast uh, when you finish the after Eid, basically, during the month of Shawwal. The person fasts six days with the intention that this is for the six days of Shawwal. Then uh, make up whatever days the person has missed in Ramadan. This is a minor opinion and uh, Allah knows best. It is not uh, recommended because it goes against uh, the wording in the hadith of the uh, Prophet ﷺ. Can we combine the intention of fasting shawwal and other days and others and other fasts? For example, someone has the, uh, the habit of fasting Mondays and Thursdays or fasting the white days, uh, three days in every month. So do we combine the intention of this and uh, fasting the month of uh, six days of shawwal? Yes, it is it's possible to do so. By doing that, the person get double reward for making up, uh, I mean, six days of shawwal and also for doing the sunnah of Mondays and Thursdays. Allah knows best. And uh, how about fasting these six days of shawwal combining the intention with missed days in Ramadan? This is not permissible because there are two types of fasts. One is an obligation, the other is a sunnah. The obligatory fasts need to have a specific intention that you are fasting this day in order to make up a day you have missed in Ramadan. You cannot uh, combine the uh, intention of fasting sunnah and fasting the obligatory uh, fast. So they have to have separate intention. So uh, as we said, it is not permissible for somebody to say they are making up the six days of shawwal and at the same time they are fasting the days they missed during Ramadan. This thing has to be separate. However, a person can combine the six days of shawwal and the white days or uh, other days uh, they intended to fast. And then uh, what we learn mostly in Ramadan it is uh, skills. As Muslims we all know uh, all the prohibitions basic as well as additional in the sunnah when we are fasting. So when we master those skills, we discipline ourselves during the month of Ramadan. And the uh, month of Shawwal onward for the following Ramadan, we need to apply those uh, skills. What have we learned? That we need to remain steadfast upon. Because Allah mentioned in the Quran that those who uh, believe in Allah, they affirm, they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they remain steadfast on it, those are the ones who will be given the glad tidings at the time of death. Angel will come and give them the good news that we are your companion in this life, we will be your companion in the hereafter. You should have no fear. They give you that assurance, give you contentment because you are undertaking a journey of uncertainty. You are going to where you have no idea and you are alone. That's why it is important that you don't attach yourself to the masses here because they will not accompany you when you will be alone in that journey of the hereafter. It is an individual journey. No parents will help you there. No children will help you there. No wealth will help you. 
Allah mentioned this one in the Quran. He said, "Yawma la yanfa'u malun wa la banun illa man atallah bi galwin salim." It's a day when mal meaning wealth and children will not benefit you. What will benefit you is a pure submissive heart. In another he said, "Inna allazina qalu rabbun Allah summa astaqamu." تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تنزنوا وأبسوا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون. You only remain steadfast on these things, you will be giving glad tidings that Jannah is waiting for you. So we should all strive, make effort to gain. I mean to spread these skills we have learned during the month of Ramadan for the rest of the year. And we keep repeating that cycle until we return back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. One things basic that every believer strive to do during the month of Ramadan is to recite more Quran, reciting more of the Quran, the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and gaining consciousness of Allah, taqwa. We develop these qualities. Minimum, every Muslim strive for this one. When somebody strive to learn the Quran repeatedly and consistently during the month of Ramadan, they will keep doing it throughout the year. And the more you read the Quran, the more you will find guidance, because you are、uh, having a conversation with the Almighty. Allah is talking to you directly; is giving you guidance through reading the Quran. Especially when you're reading it with understanding, pondering upon the revelation, not just reading for the sake of reading, which is not bad by itself. But the best is to read with understanding, so that you will make it a guide, use a guide for your life. Another things we learn, and、uh, consistently the masjid are full in Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. In the last few days of the month of Ramadan, we are able to return back to our masjid for congregational prayers. You will see that the masjid is full. People are coming to the prayer. They don't pray individually in their homes or offices. They are joining the the masjid in the congregational prayer. This is a good habit, because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, a prayer that is prayed in the congregation has Twenty-seven times more reward than a prayer performed alone, individually at home or、uh, another place. So we strive to gain this reward throughout of the year, not just、uh, congregational Muslim in Ramadan, but nobody sees you after Ramadan. Why is important to、uh, join the congregational prayer? Because you learn, it give you encouragement, and、uh, you will know about the situation of the other Muslims, and they will know about your situation as well. So it's important for the、uh, people to come together as an ummah, keeping good company. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, the similitude of the Muslim is like the ummah is like one body. When A portion, a part of it, is ill. The whole body will feel the fever. You will feel the pain of it. So when you see Muslims、uh, suffering, you will try your best to help, one way or the other, by your actions, by your words, by your wealth, whatever means you can, you will contribute. But you only do that when you are aware. Of their suffering, and how you will be aware is by trying to join the Muslim body, by trying to know what is happening around. During the month of Ramadan,、uh, most Muslims will reflect upon Allah's names and attributes. You will ponder upon the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You will start thinking how merciful Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is. He gave us Laylatul Qadr, one night of worship, 
that will give us reward of lifetime. You start wondering, thinking about these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do one action, he reward you ten times. You do Laylatul Qadr once, he record you worshipping him for lifetime. And uh, other things, other uh, names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are feeling hungry and thirsty, you start appreciating the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for providing us sustenance, water and drink. I mean water and food. So these things make you aware and conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And during the month of Ramadan, we try to increase our Islamic knowledge. We try to know what is allowed and what is not allowed when we are fasting. I see people asking very basic things, which is very important. They ask, if I cut my nails while I'm fasting, does that impact my fast? If I cut my hair, if I put eye drops, if I put air drops, these are, we are not uh, laughing or ridiculing anybody for asking this question. Why are they asking? Because they care. So the same way you are trying to know what is allowed and what is not allowed while you are fasting, you should also be very keen in knowing what is allowed and what is not allowed in your trade, what is allowed and what is not allowed in any other aspect of your life, in your job, in anything you are doing. The first thing and foremost you need to know, is it allowed? Does it go against the Islamic uh, Sharia? Does it go against the principles that Allah SWT laid for my life? So, the same way you are conscious of that, be conscious of Allah in everything you are doing outside Ramadan while you are not fasting. Is it allowed? We do a lot of supplication while we are fasting, which is highly encouraged by the Prophet وسلم, because he said the supplication of somebody who is fasting is not rejected. It's among the uh, supplication of people whose uh, supplication are not rejected. Another one is somebody who is oppressed. So we do a lot of uh, supplication, dua, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our needs, for the needs of our families, for the needs of our, our neighbors and the Muslim ummah in general. This should consistently carry out because our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadat. Du'a is actually worship. Hadith is reported by Imam Tirmidhi that when you are making du'a, you are actually worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So making du'a does not require you to have wudu, does not require you to face the ibla, does not require you to be in any state. Just make du'a anytime, anywhere. It's not like reading the Quran. It's not like praying. It can be anytime, anywhere, in any situation. So, the du'a is the weapon of the believer. Everything you do in your life, first and foremost, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, I'm about to do this. Facilitate it for me. Make my task easy. And this is the sunnah of all the prophets. Whenever they are entering into anything, they start in something, they will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them. A very famous example is the dua of Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was given the mission to go and confront Fir'aun, one of the most arrogant tyrants. But then he supplicated to Allah, Rabbi Srali Sadri, wa Sirli Amri, wa Alul Ugdatan Min Lisani, Yafgaw Gawli. Asking Allah, because he knows where he is going is very serious. It's something that if he doesn't have the backing and the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he cannot succeed. He is facing a very tyrannical person. So make dua in everything you are doing, even if you think is something simple. Making dua is a weapon 
that will never fail for any believer. Remembering Allah day and night, making dhikr, subhanallah, astaghfirullah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, and all other ways of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu his tongue is always moist in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making dhikr, astaghfirullah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, and so forth, many other, subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah, lazim, and any other uh, supplication, day and night, you make supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is not only in Ramadan, it's even for the entire life. And then calling others to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is important. Calling others is one of the mission that MCHK has set up. Uh, why? Because we think when you see something good, you don't benefit it for yourself only and the people around you. You make it beneficial to a large number of people as much as possible. And our goal, inshallah ta'ala, is to reach as far as possible. And the biggest number is our goal. Inshallah ta'ala, we will carry on the dawah until Allah takes us back. Against all challenges, and we are asking for support, we thank all the uh, people helping us one way or the other, whether it's financial, whether it's uh, material, whether it's being physically present, helping us editing and uh, copying, printing, all effort is much welcome. So calling the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not only to take the mic and speak, it's also to contribute and be part of the support. Whatever you're doing is part of the da'wah. Actually, those who do the background work, they deserve much more than the one taking a microphone and speaking to the people. Because without the background work, the support, these things will never happen. So we ask Allah SWT to uh, make all our task easy and reward all of us by his rahmah. So da'wah is very important. Whether you will join MCHK or any other organization or you will do it alone, individually, we must strive for da'wah. Because this is an instruction from Allah SWT coming in the Quran. Wal asr, inna al-insana la fi khusran, illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu salihat what I was so bil hack here is that you call the people to the truth. All mankind is at loss except those who believe they do righteous deed and they call people to the truth, calling the people to the truth of our Lord, what Allah has revealed, what Allah wants from us by sending us in this world. You need to call the people to that. And you will face challenges. You will face difficulties while you're doing that. You remain patient. You observe sabr. May Allah give us sabr. During the month of Ramadan, we learn uh, burning our ego. Of course, when you are not eating and drinking, you will burn a lot of fat. But... The ultimate was to burn your ego. I was speaking to one of my friends who is a teacher. He said, while I'm teaching in Ramadan, the students become naughty and I cannot even scold them. I don't want to engage in uh, uh, disciplining them and arguing with them. This is exactly what Ramadan gave us. When you are fasting, it gives you that focus you don't try to win basically you are trying to do the right things so may Allah give us that we observe more what we are doing wrong we correct it than starting to always pointing fingers at others 
Only those people are faulty. Only those people are wrong. How about ourselves? We need to evaluate ourselves. We need to focus on what we are doing right, improve on it. What we are doing wrong, we correct it. So this is important. So controlling and our anger and observing patience is very important. Repenting and begging for forgiveness. SubhanAllah, it's very common when you go to the masjid in Ramadan, whether it's during the prayer or outside the prayer, you see someone sitting in a corner weeping, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. And uh, more when people are touched by the recitation of the Quran and you see people crying profusely. Why? Because they are hoping by showing their remorse of the wrong things they did in their life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, by his rahmah, forgive them. And we believe Allah forgives. He forgives sins because he calls upon the believers. He said, or you have believed who have transgressed against themselves, do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who forgives all sins. So he is the one who often forgives. And how do you get forgiveness? You ask for it. When you do wrong to a human being, the basic thing you do is to apologize and seek for forgiveness for the things you've done wrong. More rightfully should be done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we transgress against Allah, we ask Allah to forgive us and he will forgive us. And uh, the whole things revolve about, around refining our manners refining our manners. This whole exercise comes to achieving one goal is to have much better manners than we had before. And the Prophet ﷺ said in an authentic narration that he was sent to perfect manners. SubhanAllah. When you have good manners it means you have accumulated a lot of other qualities before you get to those best manners. And the Prophet ﷺ was best in his character and manners. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala praised him for this one. In the Quran, he said, Inna kalala khulqin azim. He is certainly of a very noble character. And we should emulate that example. We embody that as Muslims to be role models for the Ummah, role models for mankind. When they see us, they feel comfort. When they see us, they want to be like us. And we can only do that when we have good manners. You will only attract people to copy you when you are displaying best of manners, best of characters in dealing with them, in helping them. And uh, one of the things, last I will mention, is giving in charity. When you see people in need, you donate, you support them, you are not only touching them, but you are also impacting those who will see you helping those in need. You will make them want to do the same. You will make them feel, oh, if this guy who seems poorer than me, is doing this, how about me who is wealthier than him? I could do better. If someone is digging a well for a village, and why I can't do even better myself? So you start thinking, oh, if this person can do this, actually I could do better. So you are inciting the people to give more. In that, you benefit the ummah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, 
Allah will not cease to look after your affairs as long as you are looking after the affairs of his creation. You are showing mercy to the people, Allah will be merciful to you. SubhanAllah. So this is something really uh, we need to apply in our life. As Muslims, we need to extend it throughout the entire life, not only from one, uh, only for Ramadan. We need to make it from one Ramadan to the next Ramadan. So, when we gain all these things, we start applying them, we keep to that standard, we should show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having guided us to Islam, for having given us this opportunity to be of that standard. Be the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called in the Quran, he said, Kuntum khaira ummatun ukhrijat linnas. تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْحَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ فَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ He said, you are the best among the, uh, the people. Why? Because you uh, call the people to do good and you prohibit them from uh, doing the wrong. And you believe in Allah. And you know the last day will come. Be that model Allah SWT is calling us to be. So we should show gratitude when we reach that level. And uh, we develop these skills, we make them steadfast. We remain steadfast upon that until we return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a very quick reminder I, I wanted to uh, give to myself first of all and to all our listeners uh, and uh, followers in MCHK. And I urge you again to step up your effort in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have the taqwa of Allah in whatever situation you are, in any situation, in uh, any aspect of your life. Whatever you are doing, have that consciousness. As Allah called us upon, uh, upon us in the Quran, He said, Ya ayyuhalladzina amanu taqullah. Uh, illa wa muslimun. For you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you ought to fear Him, do not die except you are in a pure state of submission. And this is calling the believers. So it's a reminder for us who have just completed Ramadan, we have observed fasting during the day. In Ramadan, abstaining from eating, drinking, and all other uh, Allah has prohibited us, it shows that we are believers. And then, we need to be consistent in doing this one until we return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us uh, among those who has achieved His pleasure during the month of Ramadan and make us steadfast until we return back to Him. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, this is uh, what I had come uh, as a reminder. If you have any question for MCHK regarding fasting the six days of Shawwal and uh, or making of Ramadan, uh, please don't hesitate to reach to MCHK. Uh, we will try to address the question, if not now, maybe by writing. And uh, inshallah, if we know, we'll give you the answer. If we don't know, we'll find out with the scholars. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.